Hello friends. Today we're going to visit Silver Sands State Park in Milford, Connecticut and Charles Island, which is located in the park about a half mile from shore. Milford, Connecticut is less than 70 miles northeast of New York City on the north shore of Long Island Sound. Silver Sands is located only a short distance from I-95 and the Boston Post Road, which is Route 1, but you will have to use GPS to find it as it is not well marked, but there are directions on their website. And there is a fee for out-of-state residents. The uh, park is still in the process of being built up. And for now, I believe, the restrooms and proposed concession stand are not operational, even though that building is very impressive looking. It seems that portable toilets will just have to do for now. But there are picnic tables near the parking, but only two charcoal grills, apparently. So if you want to grill, bring your own charcoal and come early to grab a spot. From the parking area, there is a long causeway to walk to the beach. It goes over the salt marsh, which is a protected wetland that floods with every high tide. The marsh is an important habitat for the local wildlife, including birds, fish, and shellfish. And here we see beyond the salt marsh is the main building that will soon house the various facilities. Now, as we wing our way over the marsh and the causeway, we can see Charles Island in the distance. At the beach, the causeway ends at the boardwalk. The beach here is nice and sandy. Kids love playing on the beach, building sand castles and populating them with the small hermit crabs that you find there at low tide. Today, we start off about an hour before low tide. The sandbar, or tombolo, to use this, the scientific term, is slowly being exposed. Its surface will be completely above water at normal low tide, but only for a short while until the tide comes back in. By the way, the term tombolo comes from Italian and means a natural sandy isthmus that connects an island to the mainland. It's a beautiful spring day in mid-April, about 11 a.m., and people have already begun to walk to Charles Island. Be warned that from May 1st until early September, the island is closed to visitors. This is to protect birds that nest there over the summer, and you will notice them already beginning to nest later in this video. A common occurrence is that people will patiently follow the falling water as it exposes the sandbar, and that's what we locals call it. And you can see a group already formed at that point. There is a danger to being impatient though if you try to walk across through the water. A powerful cross current runs between the two bodies of water on either side of the sandbar. It works like a riptide, and the current can be strong enough to pull you off the sandbar. People have drowned because of this. It also pays to have a good pair of shoes on because much of the sandbar is very rocky and can be uncomfortable to bare feet. If you look down at the water below, you can actually see a current moving across the sandbar, so beware. For a piece of real estate that encompasses only about 14 acres, Charles Island has quite a bit of history. The local Pogusset tribe called the island Pokwahog, and their sachem, or leader, was said to have passed many a summer there catching fish and digging for the plentiful clams. English settlers purchased the island as part of the land that became the colony of Milford in 1639. It became Charles Island when it was bought by one Charles Dean, who hoped, unsuccessfully apparently, to grow, to grow tobacco there. Later in 1699, the notorious British pirate Captain Kidd was passing through Long Island Sound when he decided to bury his treasure. He was on his way to be executed. In fact, a large portion of his treasure was later found on Gardner's Island, but he is said to have buried much more in several locations, including Charles Island. People have searched for that treasure now for over 300 years, but no more has been found. So, if you take a stroll along the shore of the island, you just might stumble across a gold doubloon or even an emerald tiara. So as we swing around Charles Island, we're, we are on the west side right now and we're looking east. And the land that you see in the east there is all part of Milford. 
it swings around there quite a few beaches in Milford as you go along. It's a shoreline community. And as we go along, and you can just uh, see the Milford Harbor, which is between those two pieces of land there. You can maybe sort of see that. It looks like there's a cut in there, and that's where the Milford Harbor is. Um, I'm just kind of seeing this going along way in the distance. You can see New Haven. The tall buildings in New Haven, just a little bit, I think. If you look over there to the right. And I think we're probably in the distance. You see the, the hills there. One of those is probably Sleeping Giant. Can't quite see that it's not that clear. Then you have East Rock and West Rock. And then we're coming around here. And the beach to the right is Fort Trumbull Beach. And I showed that in one of my videos recently, the tour of Milford, downtown Milford. And then we have Silver Sands Beach or Silver Beach. We always call it the Silver Sands. Um, Milford, um, the Charles Island itself is an island, a natural island. And I suspect, though, that a lot of those rocks may have been put there in order to prevent erosion because there is sand further up. I could be wrong about that. That could be natural. Um, I haven't been able to find any information about that. And the distance to the left there, there's a power plant. You see that tall tower way over there? That's a power plant on the Housatonic River which is a river which has a large estuary, which is partly salt water as it goes up. Um, it goes all the way up to the Hostonic. It, it, it is navigable all the way up to Derby, about 10 miles to the north. And back in the colonial days and the sailing ship days, sailing ships actually went all the way up to Derby, which is a small port up there. Okay, swinging over to the left here, now we're looking to the west. And those buildings over there on the left there are way out in the distance, our Bridgeport, which is about nine miles from here. Um, New Haven's about 11 miles, so Milford's about halfway between the two. And we're just swinging along here. And you can sort of see the Housatonic River estuary. It's hard to quite make out, but the... Um, that point of land way over to the left there, you see the land. There's no, there's no more islands over there. That goes out to uh, the point. On the other side of the point is the Hostanic Estuary. And the Audubon Society actually has a, a location near there where you can go. To, children like to go there to look at the natural wonders and so forth of um, this the area here. And here now we're swinging in, getting closer to... Uh, Charles Island and as we're looking in um, I point out there's a structure there it looks like a chimney it could be a chimney it could be uh, there was an old arch as part of the Dominican Fathers retreat they had a retreat here on the island in the 19th century actually in the, in the 20th century and where they had I guess men come and go on a religious retreat and they were actually on a small island like this there were a lot of small cabins that they built there as well as larger structures for the meeting house and so forth and they had a church there i believe please notice the many white dots near the eastern shore of the island we'll zoom in but what you are seeing are many egrets that are roosting in the trees preparing to nest and lay eggs herons and other birds are also nesting on the island now which is why the state will prevent people from visiting there after may 1st Okay, as we take one more quick tour around Charles Island, I hope I have given you a better understanding of the history and the recent ecological developments of the island. For thousands of years, people have moved on and off the island, manipulating the habitat. More recently, economic development in the 18th and 19th centuries, combined with several bad hurricanes, have wreaked havoc on it. It will be interesting to see how the natural environment develops now that it has become, only since 1995, a protected natural preserve. We'll fly back to the mainland along the more exposed sandbar and then finish with a short tour up and down the beaches of Milford from Fort Trumbull Beach to the east and Walnut Beach to the west and ending by the causeway. Yeah, and you could probably see <clears throat> as we come around now, we're heading north toward the mainland uh, along the sandbar, that sandbar 
bar is more exposed now than when we first came. There's a few minutes to make a difference. One thing I noticed though also is those people right close to the middle of the screen who are in, on the sandbar, they are risking a little bit. Uh, the water's not that deep, so I guess it's probably fairly safe, and they probably have boots or they're barefoot. But you have to be very careful about walking on the sandbar um, when there's water there. Even if it's only a foot of water, it could be dangerous. I just have to stress that again. We don't want anybody drowning to get onto the island. And there you see the normal situation where the people are slowly walking, uh, usually keeping dry. Some, you know, in the summertime, of course, they don't mind a little bit of water. It's still, the water's still only a little over 50 degrees now, so it's not too comfortable. Uh, and now we're coming up, and this gives you a good view of Silver Sand State Park. And you can see that um, there's a lot of salt marsh there. And I'm thinking about doing a story just on the salt marshes. Uh, a lot of salt marshes were destroyed over the years uh, by developments, as you could probably see those houses over on the right. Um, but then in the 50s or 60s, they became more protective of the salt marshes because they found out that the salt marshes were important ecologi ecologically. Um, for clams as well as fish. I think baby clams was sometimes grow in there and then come out to sea afterward. And the fish, of course, have a, some kind of life cycle there too. Okay, this is uh, East Broadway that we're going along. This is still Silver Beach and uh, further along is Fort Trumbull Beach. I don't know if there's a beach between the two. They have the, each beaches have their names. Um, but East Broadway, I know her very well. Um, I spent many, many years in and out of here. I never lived in Milford myself, but I had relatives who did, did and still do. It's a very nice uh, beachfront community, nice town. And here we're now we're heading back. Um, and you just get another good idea of what the state park looks like. You see the causeway going over uh, the salt marsh. And when you're walking over the causeway, a lot of times you see egrets and other birds uh, red-winged blackbirds flying around. It's pretty interesting, really. And a lot of people walk on the, uh, the beach and they walk on the boardwalk year-round. Um, I, I belong to a photography club, a veterans photography club, and we would come in here and take really great photographs um, year-round uh, of the beach and the denizens of the beach and so forth. Now we're heading, this is still Silver Beach, I believe, but then further in is Walnut Beach, and way over to the left there, I believe, is Laurel Beach, and there might even be another beach name in between. I'm not too sure, but I'm familiar, familiar with Walnut Beach and Laurel Beach. Uh, as you see, the boardwalk, they extended it. This is fairly recent. When I was a young adult, we would come to Silver Sands, and the state park was totally undeveloped, and there was, there was no boardwalk. Well, so this boardwalk is actually pretty nice. Uh, it's good for walking along. I'm, I'm assuming they allow bike riders on there, but I'm not too sure about that. But it's a very good, nice place to walk. And, of course, you see more salt marsh. Uh, and then we swing along here. This is also still part of Milford. And we're heading in in the distance there. Not sure where it starts. Is the area of Milford called Devon, uh, which, I'm again, I'm also familiar with. It's a nice area. They have a nice bakery there and a lot of good food in Devon. And the Boston Post Road goes through there. And we're just coming upon all these apartments here. I don't know much about the apartments. I had a friend who lived there 40, 50 years ago. Don't know much about them since then. Some of these are they're pretty old apartments. And I think we're getting ready to swing around. That's, again, Bridgeport way over in the distance, sort of at the center right. And you can sort of see a few of the tall buildings. Whoop, we're swinging around. Here we go. Now we're heading back for the final flight. Uh, you see it's uh, getting, it's pretty much low tide now as you look along here. May tide, water might go out just a little bit more, but you're pretty much at low tide with sandbars all over. And let me second here. Yep, and you see the, um, straight ahead there, the, the parking for the state 
park and I think they have looks like they're getting really ready to develop more parking in that area as well as uh, picnic tables and so forth they're going over the marsh again and you see Charles Island in the distance and we're and these um, little rivers coming out uh, they flow in and out the salt water the marshes uh, the water rises with the high tide and the water goes out with the low tide and you can actually sometimes uh, run a kayak through those marsh streams They're like canal if you like this video please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification button also if you have seen other videos that i have done you know that i like to visit locales and discuss their historical significance as well as the ways to enjoy them be they museums parks or other recreational places or historical places and we have some great and unusual places coming up in the next videos that i think you'll like